Our next speaker is Gina Som Precious Akpo. She is from the University of Nigeria, lecturer in the Department of Pharmaceutics. So she came for a long way. Thank you so much for coming. And she's presenting to us formulation and in vitro and in vivo antimalarial evaluation of artesunate loaded ethosomes. Okay, thank you for the introduction. I'm here to present a work titled Formulation in Vitro and In Vivo Anti-Malaria Evaluation of Artesunate Loaded Ethosome. It's a work we carried out back in Nigeria um, in our drug delivery and nanomedicine research group in the University of Nigeria and Suka. Um, but before I continue, I'd like to thank the organizers of CleanNAM for the opportunity to be here and for the grants they gave that made it possible for me to be here. This is my first time and it's been so exciting. I've been so inspired. inspired. So I'm going to be following this outline during my presentation. Um, um, for some of us in this room, you may know that malaria is still ravaging so many sub-Saharan African countries. And uh, in my country, we have up to 50 million cases annually. And that is why government bodies and um, international agencies like WHO are advocating for new drugs, like he presented a few minutes ago, and even new strategies for old drugs. My work was based on designing a new strategy for an already existing drug for treating severe malaria, which is artesunate. And why severe malaria? The reason we are looking at severe malaria is because recently, due to comorbidity with um, immunosuppressive diseases such as um, HIV and even malnutrition, um, uncomplicated malaria could easily progress to severe malaria. And other factors such as um, environmental factors and even um, poverty-related factors can lead to uncomplicated malaria progressing rapidly to severe malaria. And that's why we are focusing on severe malaria. And the first line treatments according to WHO for severe malaria is IV um, or IM atesunate. However, this form of treatment requires hospital admission and the skills of a medical personnel. And this can be very difficult in some hard to reach area in um, Africa. For most of us in this room, we have hospitals close to our neighborhood, and we can easily walk into a hospital and receive medical attention as at Wendy. Uh, or we can even call an ambulance and they come to our houses and pick us up in emergency cases. But that is not so in some places in Africa. This picture here shows a member of the Hard to Reach team that is attending to children under a tree. And some of this team, uh, people from this team come to these villages once in two weeks or once in a while. And if a patient is um, having severe malaria, the person will have to wait for that period of time before they will receive medical attention. Other factors such as um, environmental factors like flooding can make an area inaccessible. And like he mentioned earlier, severe malaria can kill within 24 hours if the patient is not treated. And that is why um, we decided to investigate the intranasal route as an alternative to the intramuscular route for the treatment of severe malaria. And our target, target patients are um, children under five. And um, especially for those that are in places that cannot be reached easily. And so why do we um, want to investigate the nasal roots? It's because it is a, a non-invasive alternative to parenteral roots. And apart from that, with it, you can still um, achieve systemic, central, and um, local effect of the drug. And that is because, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. How do I go? Yeah, sorry about that. So um, I wanted to show you, so the, the advantage is because um, 
the area is small, but it's highly vascularized. And then because of uh, the presence of um, microvilli on the lining of the nasal mucosa, we can say that it has a relatively um, high surface area, large surface area. Apart from that, it, you can achieve fast onset of action, both systemically and even centrally, because it's able to bypass um, the blood-brain barrier and even first pass me metabolism. And the main advantage we had in mind to exploit was that of self-administration. Um, because with a, a nasal formulation, we can easily administer the drug. Uh, a less skilled medical personnel or even the, a, a caregiver can administer the drug and prevent neural disabilities, uh, brain, brain injuries, and even other outcomes of severe malaria that manifest later on in life. So we, we went through the... Um, nanomedicine route to be able to achieve this. We decided to um, load our drugs into ethosomes. Ethosomes are soft lipid delivery systems that contain phospholipid, um, water and ethanol. And the reason we did this was to, because ethosomes are known to um, permeate through biological uh, barriers such as intact um, skin, human skin. And as you can see in this place, it, the structure is that of having a core uh, where the drug and ethanol and the water is located and an outer shell that, that is made, to, made up of the phospholipid. And because both phospholipid and ethanol are good permission enhancer, they are able to disrupt the um, uh, struct, str stratum corneum, making it leaky and making it possible for the drug to be delivered uh, into the body. So in our research, we had different batches of our ethosomes containing 50% uh, and 30% ethanol with different concentrations of drugs, specifically 2.4% and 1.2%. Then we had another batch of our formulation containing chitosan. And the reason we, we, we had a need to use a mucoadhesive polymer is because the major drawback of intranasal formulation is that of mucociliary clearance. So we wanted to increase the... Bio, sorry, the residency time of our formulation by adding a mucoadhesive polymer. Uh, after that, we characterize our formulations based on um, uh, particle size pH. We also did in vitro uh, release of our drug in simulated nasal fluid at pH 6.4. Our in vivo study was carried out using a, a, an ex experimental severe malaria model where we infected our mice with plasmodium bengue bengue and um, waited for them to become um, severely, um, um, to have the severe form of the disease and then we treated. Then we also, in our in vivo study, we also compared the intramuscular roots and the intranasal roots, and we also compared with commercial samples of atesunate in the market. Um, the result shows that our, the average particle size for our ethosomes was um, 508 nanometer, and from this um, image gotten from CEM, we can see that it has a, a dark core and a a, a transparent outer um, shell, and it correlates with um, the di diagram I showed you earlier of ethosomes because this outer core is the phospholipid, which was not stained by the negative stain we used for obtaining this image, while the surrounding and the core that is made up of water and um, ethanol are stained by the negative stain. The entrapment efficiency for all our formulations were above 70%, with the highest being approximately 85%. And we noticed that the entrapment efficiency um, increased with the concentration of ethanol. So for this, the, the batches containing batch B and the batch B are the ones that contain 50% ethanol, while batch A contain 30% ethanol. And from, what, from this, you can see that this had the highest entrapment efficiency. And the difference in entrapment efficiency became significant at higher drug concentrations. The uh, batches that have the figure two are the ones that have the higher concentration of the drug. And you see that there is a significant difference between these two, containing 50% and a high drug concentration and 30% ethanol and a high drug concentration. Uh, 
for the in vitro drug release, the batches with the lowest drug entrapment efficiency um, had the higher drug release. As you can see in this two, so batch A1 and um, uh, uh, B, B1 had the highest um, release. And for batch A1, A1 we see that 59% of the drug was released after six hours. And out of this, 45% was released in, after 30 minutes. This will be of an advantage if it can be translated in vivo because in severe malaria, we want fast onset of action. And if up to 45% of the drug can be released within 30 minutes, it will be an advantage. And we also noticed that, um, like I said before, that entrapment efficiency was dependent on the drug concentration. The in vivo um, study was in two parts. We had um, the first, th this first result. So in the first result, we found out that after intranasal administration of both the standard drug and our etosomal formulation, there was neither increase or decrease in parastemia level after treatment, as you can see. As you can see here, so there was neither increase or decrease. However, for the blank, there was an increase in parastamia level after treatment. The inter interpretation we can give to this is that the quantity of drug we administered was just enough to forestall parastamia increase, but was not enough to clear it. But, and that can be proved because um, the blank, with the blank, we had an increase in parastamia level after treatment, but this is still not good enough. And the reason is because in our first try, we administered the drug to fully um, awake mice because we had concerns about anesthetizing the animal, animals when they were already weak and they, they had severe malaria. So we wanted to try to find out if we could succeed in our administering our formulations without anesthetizing the mice, but it didn't turn out very well. In the second experiment, we learned our lessons, and this time we anesthetized the mice. And apart from that, we also used the formulation that contained the muco, uh, muco adhesive polymer, um, chitosan. So in this study, we found out that we had up to 60% reduction in uh, parastemia with the standard drug administered, and then 30% parastemia clearance for our etosomal formulation. And uh, for the blank, there was still an increase in um, parastemia level. And um, we, we, we could conclude after this that we could achieve 60% to 30% parastemia clearance after the administration of our intranasal formulation, um, but for the standard drug and then the etosomal formulations respectively, compared to 83% to 70%. 78% reduction when administered intramuscularly. And we also could see from the previous slide that we could achieve up to 30% um, improvement in our outcome by administering the formulation with a muco adhesive polymer and by anesthetizing our, our animals. So these factors all contributed to the outcome of our our experiments. And we also found out that the physicochemical property of the drug, the residency time, the alertness of the animal could affect the outcome of um, ad administering drugs, especially to mice in, um, um, in mice models. And why we said physicochemical properties of the drug is because in the 60% the reduction that we saw in the standard is because this standard was atesinate sodium, which was more water soluble. And the one we used for etosoma formulation was um, atesinate. It was not the, the, um, the salt form, it was the base form. So we feel that maybe that's why we have this difference, 60% and 30% um, difference. So going forward, we hope to use larger animals with big, bigger nostrils because that was the <laughs> greatest challenge that we had in, in our in vivo study because most times when we administer the drug, especially with the uh, non anesthetized mice, they shake their heads and the formulation run out. So we intend to use larger animals. However, the reason we didn't use larger animals in our first um, our first experiment in this whole experiment was because the 
plasmodium bege bege that we use can be cannot be cannot cause malaria in bigger animals. So when you admit, when you infect them with plasmodium bege bege, after some time, even without treatment, they beat the malaria. So if you administer your formulation, you won't know if the reduction in parastemia that's Come, uh, that, that you see is due to your formulation or due to the fact that the animal can beat malaria in that form. So we also hope to design other delivery systems because from the uh, ethosomes we formed, it, the 30% reduction in parastemia is not good enough, or the, even the 60%. Then for the, the, we also hope to study other anti-malaria and find out if we'll be able to uh, have an intranasal form of the drug that patients can use. I'll end by thanking God for the strength and inspiration and the opportunities he has provided for this um, research, and my supervisors back at home and even um, in UK. I also want to thank, already I've thanked the organizers of CLINAM and my students that helped in the in vivo study, and to Lipoy and Olio for the gift of phospholipon. 9CH and softies and 154 that we use, and also the drug delivery and um, nanomedicine research group back in Nigeria. And thank you all for listening. Okay, question. Okay. Yeah, questions. Yeah. So I have uh, one remark and one question. So the question is, you want to use it uh, for the children below five, and you, you're, you're using ethanol. So it is maybe a problem. Is it forbidden? It, it should be forbidden for the, such young children. The thing is that the quantity, the quantity that we're finally getting will not be um, intoxicating, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and then we also use, we have formulations, even oral formulations that contain ethanol, it's not forbidden, it's just the quantity that we'll be careful about, the concentration of the ethanol that finally gets to, this, to the system. And the remark is, uh, because these rare diseases are nice, because not a lot of research is done in these fields, and for example, we hear here in the conference a lot about cancer, mostly about can cancer, mm. not about such diseases. So I think also it would be nice to see results of uptake studies on the parasites itself. So just to see how parasites interact with your particles. And it's not so complicated to do, but you, you can gain nice results to just understand before going into in vivo studies. Okay. I would say, I don't know, what is the opinion of other people sitting here? Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for that remark. Yeah. The thing is that, um, like I said, is the first part of the work. The reason we, we formulated and went straight to in vivo study was because no matter what we do um, in vitro, because it is about the roots of delivery, if we do not check out the outcome of our research by doing an in vivo study, we may not be able to even have reasons to do the cell uptake and others. And also, this work was carried out in Nigeria, and it is an ongoing work. We hope to um, get opportunities outside to go ahead and do the cell uptake study because we may not be able to do it back in Nigeria. But it's, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you.